talking fasted cardio, um, have some thoughts on this that are a little different than what I'm seeing on social media. I'm seeing a lot, a lot of coaches, you know, aficionados of health saying like, no, don't do fasted anything. Make sure you eat breakfast. It doesn't matter if you are, you know, fasted during cardio or not. It's just about what you eat over the course of the day. And I have some different viewpoints on this. I'm actually a huge, huge fan of walking fasted and hear me out. I'll explain why. All right. So here's an example. I intermittent fast. Okay. So it's been hours, several hours. Oh, happy international women's day. Right on. Thank you. Um, so it's been several hours since I ate, go to sleep, sleep all night, wake up, do my morning routine, go to the gym and walk. Walking fasted makes all the sense in the world to me. So here's the first thing. When you're in that fasted state, it's been 16 hours, 12 to 16 hours since you last ate a meal. Your, gly your uh, glycogen is pretty depleted and you are going to um, have low insulin. And when you have low insulin... Sorry, I'm at the car wash <laughs> or driving my car. When you have low insulin, you are going to um, increase fat oxidation. So to me, it makes all the sense in the world. It's like, okay, I'm already in this fasted state. And if I just walk and I don't jack up my blood sugar like crazy, I'm not talking doing like super high intensity hit workouts or running or something really high intensity fasted. But walking fasted is smart as shit. So smart because all you're doing is like you're already, your body is using up what it already has and you're just driving into that a little bit more. So you're going to increase fat oxidation. Here's the other thing. When you're fasted and insulin is low and you are walking, you start producing all of these anti-inflammatory effects in your body. The body is in a healing state when it's not in a fed state. So fed state, it's in growth mode, but once it runs out, of that fuel, now it's in a healing state and also using up what you already have stored. There's so much goodness that happens in that unfed state. And when you walk in the middle of that, you're just ramping that up without jacking up your blood sugar. Now, a big reason that a lot of people are saying like, eat before you work out, I understand that because we have like epidemic levels of people in like adrenal fatigue, low thyroid function, just stressed out the freaking wazoo. And then they're in that fasted state, which your, your adrenaline can go up a lot easier in that fasted state. You lose minerals. So if you're like fasting all the time and then driving into high intensity, you're just jacking up adrenaline like crazy. And if you're already in adrenal, having adrenal stress, I understand why coaches are saying like, Hey, 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 careful on that. You know? But walking, you're increasing the, all of the systems in your body that help you heal and recover. You're sending oxygen, you're sending nutrients, you're using up stored body fat or more likely to in that state, and you're producing these anti-inflammatory effects. Not to mention, the longer you're in that fasting window, which I look at walking as like a speeding up the fasting processes, you know, because you're just digging a little deeper into what your body's already got and you start producing things like growth hormone. Um, what else? Your insulin sensitivity, you just increase insulin sensitivity. The more deeper you go into that fasted state. So I walk, look at walking as like a expediter of the fasting states, you know? So it's really, really smart. Um, not to mention it. Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking out the road. Not to mention the first light. Yeah. Re, yeah. The light resets your circadian rhythm and you get vitamin D. Yeah. If you can do it outside, I'm not doing it outside. I fully admit right now it's just really cold in Utah still, but man, like if you live somewhere it's warm or you're gangsta and you can do it out in the cold, I could do it in the cold, but I'm just choosing not to, <laughs> but if you can do it outside, that is even better. There's so many benefits from getting that light in your eyes. Do not wear sunglasses. When you drive, if you're driving to the gym or driving home from the gym, do not wear sunglasses like pretty much ever, unless you like absolutely need to, like you just can't see because there's so much snow, like try to avoid that as much as possible. But yeah, I just wanted to like address this because I, I see so much on social media of like, do not ever exercise fasted. And I'm like, or, or fasted cardio is stupid. Like you don't need to do that. And I'm like, mm. I don't think we're looking at this in terms of like what's happening on the inside of our body. We're looking at it as only fat loss, only weight loss stuff, you know? And it's like, there are so many healing benefits for the immune system, for your metabolic health, 
when you push into that facet window a little bit. So highly recommend, highly recommend. If you're gonna go walk in the morning, you're gonna train right after, and you're like dealing with adrenal stuff or your thyroid str struggling, or you have a lot of belly fat, you can tell you've got some high cortisol going on, then yeah, bring something with you to the gym to have before you weight train, you know? So you, cause what, what's happening there is like, especially if there's some carbs in it, is it's blocking, it's blunting the rise of adrenaline from going so high, you know? And um, a lot of people just don't have the, what's, the, how should I say it? They don't have like the, uh, they're not advanced enough to be able to really perform at high levels with low glycogen, you know, you have to be very, very insulin sensitive and, and kind of advanced in your training to be able to do that. And also if you're worried about your adrenals and thyroid, I, I would not advise like doing high intensity stuff. So bring something with you. Right. But walking fasted, I mean, I used to run marathons. I used to be like super obsessed about being lean and all that stuff. And now I am like the, it's ease. It's so crazy. People coming up to me, they're like, are you prepping for a show? And I'm like, dude, I am not kidding you. I'm not even freaking trying. And I'm saying that not to be like annoying. I'm just trying to share with you. Like what I found is like so awesome. And it's intermittent fasting for me that works well. And if you can't intermittent fast because you're like worried about your adrenals or thyroid or something like that, eat, eat earlier. Like everything I just described, maybe after you're walking, but then like cut off eating earlier. That is so huge for the body to be able to repair itself during sleep. Last night I was up later than usual. I went to this breathwork group thing. It was so freaking cool. And I didn't get, I didn't get home. I didn't get to sleep till like 11. I'm usually like in bed going to sleep like 7:38. Okay. So it was really, so I was hungry. I was so hungry coming home and I was like, I could eat, but I know how I'm going to feel when I wake up, if I eat, it's just like, I know my body is not going to feel as good as energetic as it's not going to be able to repair itself during sleep as well as I'm used to, you know? So like make that push for ending eating earlier, get some good sleep and then wake up and walk fasted. And then you can have something to eat and train, you know, it's so good. You want to burn into body fat, increase all of the healing processes of your body. That flow creates so much freaking ease. So just sharing. I am a fan of fasted walking big time, big time. Highly recommend, highly recommend. It's so good for the body. You love the breath work. Yeah. If you guys haven't done like a, like one of those like hour long, like rhythmic breath work sessions. Oh my God. There's somebody in your area that does it. It's pretty popular now. Just go to one, you know, um, we're doing it at my retreat, my Maui retreat. We've got this amazing naturopathic doctor out in Maui, who's going to come and facilitate that for us. So if you're coming to the retreat, you can experience there. If you're, if you're interested in the retreat, please hit me up. We've got some room still available and like we can work with you on finances, payment options, stuff like that. If that's an issue for you. So May 10th through 14th, it's going to be powerful. So powerful. I can't, I cannot wait for that. There has been so much energy. I have had so much energy coming through me and preparing for this retreat that I will be like crying and like shaking just because there's so much freaking energy coming through me. I'm not kidding. Like it, I am so mm, very much looking forward to it. So, um, if you're interested in that, just DM me, um, or there's, you know, the info for it is on my website, terrygarrison.com. It's the links in my bio. What time do you recommend cutting off eating? I'm in bed by 10, seven for you, Marie. I like three hours before bed. You love Maui. Yeah. I love Maui too. Maui is ooh, powerful, powerful transformational energy there. We'll open you right up. That's why we're going there. We're all of my retreats. We're going places that I've been that like just being in that place, like open me up big time, you know? <laughs> so I had a lot of healing with my feminine energy in Maui. It was very beautiful. And so that's the reason I'm doing the Maui retreat. Um, all right guys, that's all. Try it out. Cut off your eating three hours before bed, get good solid sleep, walk without eating. Then if you're going to train more high intensity stuff, you can eat something. Um, and, and that's it. Just eat when you're hungry. I'm gonna go eat right now. <laughs> so but this is ease and just focus on nourishing your body with good, real whole foods from nature. And that uh, throughout the day, as your hunger signals come in, you know, find replacements 
for the junk stuff that you're eating. I have so many like goody goody gumdrops, like <laughs> health foods that I eat all the time. You know, my keto cereals, my built bars, stuff like that. It's just like you can find things to eat that give you that fix that still nourish your body more than like sugar and crap, you know, and just keep that focus, cut that eating off a few hours before bed, really be a guardian of your sleep. It is the most powerful healer that we have. There's nothing more healing to the body than sleep. End of story, period. So prioritize that like crazy and then wake up and repeat that flow and it's just like, it's so good. Um, thank you, Holly. Facet treadmill, walking on 15% incline at 2.7, okay, yeah. No, I think that's okay. Like you wanna be, um, like you could still hold a conversation is kind of the cue, I guess you would say, in order to know that you're still kind of in that fat oxidation. If you're like, hold on, nah, you're, you're increasing your blood sugar quite a bit there. You're dumping glycogen, you know, but if you want to run off fat oxidation, it's a little bit lower intensity like that. And it just depends on where you're at and like how fit you are, honestly. You know, for me, I'm doing like anywhere between 3.5 and 4.0 speed and like, anywhere from 10 to 12 incline, but I'm in pretty good shape. So that's not like super hard for me, you know? And it took me a while to work up to that. Dana, thank you. Uh, Marie, how long do you suggest walking? I try to follow the glucose goddess and walk 10 minutes after meals. That's cool, Marie. Yeah, um, I that's a great thing to do for sure. And I walk for an hour every day. I walk for an hour every day. And I was reading some research before I got on here because I want to see if there was some cool shit I could share with you guys. And I saw that um, people who hit 8,000 steps a day, they had a study that showed that they had 51% decrease um, cardiac events. And everybody I know who's like in pretty good shape, like they're like 10,000 steps a day is like easy, you know? And I was talking to a friend of mine who's also a coach and she's like, dude, I've been shocked that like, people are getting like two, 3,000 steps a day. She's like, I don't even know how that's humanly possible. How can you walk that little? And I don't say that in a shamey way. I'm just sharing like for perspective for you guys. Like those of us who stay in pretty good shape, we walk a lot. We are moving our bodies and it's so good for oxygen, nutrients coming through that blood flow, um, lymphatic drainage. Cause your lymphatic system, like the waste system, it doesn't have a, it has a very tiny ability to pump, but it's just like bare minimum. So if you're in the hospital, you don't like freaking just die, but it's so low. So like you have to mechanically make your lymphatic system go. It's good for your gut, like literal, the mechanical processing of foods, you know, you're sitting there all day. It's just harder for the body to do all the things it needs to do. Ah, thank you so much guys. All right. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Much love. Get your walking on and try not try not eating before you walk in the morning. Highly recommend. Um, what's my thoughts on the trampoline? That's good. Yeah, I think the trampoline is great for you know lymphatic flow, also reflexes and things like that, and it's fun. Some inner child work. Um, thoughts on chewing gum and if that breaks a fast? No, it does not break a fast. You're good. You know, we don't have to be so. Um, it's like, it's up to you. You know what I mean? Think how, think what a little, what that, even if it was like, I wouldn't recommend chewing sugar gum because it's like terrible for your teeth, you know? <laughs> but, um, let's say your gum has like two calories in it. Like, come on now. <laughs> Who cares? That's how I see it. It's just like, you know, and people are like, can I have anything in my coffee? I'm like, it's up to you. You know, it's just, just know that if you put some MCT oil or something, you know, some coconut oil or something like that, it's just like, it's just, now your body's going to use that and it's going to run out and just, you know what I mean? It's bring it back into yourself is all I'd say. Like when fasting got popular, I was just like, what is going on? Like, why are we removing the power from the people so much? I'm just like, this is how you do it. And these are the ways you have to optimize it. And then when you get done, you have to do this. And I'm just like, Ugh. fasting is just, you're not eating. <laughs> and when you get done, you just eat. It really doesn't have to be that complicated. I get that it can be cool to like do some bone broth first, that's smart, send some collagen to your gut lining, all that stuff. But like, just like come to your inner knowing too, you know? It doesn't have to be so, stuff doesn't have to be so complicated. And I don't like it when we as health professionals like kind of send the memo that like you guys are like dependent on us to like know how to do everything right and wrong. Like, no, dude, it's just, Everything that I share with you guys is just for your consideration, you know? 
um, pretty into this stuff. So share it, but like, I don't ever want to remove you from feeling empowered. You know what I mean? Like you can just own it the way you want to do it. Um, I don't do any more than 45 minutes. Any more than that will break down the hard earned muscle. Mm. That, there's so many factors that that would depend on to me. You know what I mean? Um, and actually like when you are fasting more, you do produce growth hormone that helps pr protect and preserve muscle. So like, there's a lot of caveats to that, you know? Um, the act of chewing causes your brain to get ready for digestive processes. Yeah, it's true. So does even seeing food, smelling food, start releasing all those enzymes. It's pretty cool. The body It's freaking magical. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful to you guys. I'm going to run much love. Bye.